who went into the Eye of Sphere in Las Vegas and peeped postcards from Earth on opening night? This guy? What is it? The best 45-minute movie travel vlog slash pseudo-religious ode to science and nature ever. Beware, spoilers. It begins with a long load in line, which moves like a train of slugs. Once finally inside, you are greeted by a burnt, skinless Megan-looking AI who answers Rando's questions. One jet inquired, how many nipples do you have? Her sweet and even reply was, I don't have nipples, I'm a robot. The foyer opens up to what looks like the spaceport from Guardians of the Galaxy. You then take a brief series of 14 escalators up to your seating at the tip of the ball. You hear shouts bouncing around the rim as guests realize they're looking down into the heart of an insanatorium. The death-defying seating rate could induce vertigo in a base jumper, not for the faint of heart or light of head. Maybe you just take like one edible. You want to be like California sober. Postcards begins and ends once upon a sci-fi trope with the seed of a space story featuring fake looking CGI and weird after earth energy. After that, it gets better though. And you start supermanning over vast swathes of the planet. A soft-spoken, multi-gendered narration takes you through some vague creation of the planet and birth of life stuff. And the giant canvas comes alive with glorious natural landscapes, stunning creatures, and fanciful flora. There's a freaking 40-foot praying mantis and other creepy crawlies, which was not cool. But then you swim the bait ball, right? And there was an elephant, aww. Science schmayans. No need to frighten the innocent of fact with a bunch of book learnings. Think Diet David Attenborough, PBS Space Time Light. The accurate formation of the Earth, or any real space stuff, would have worked so well on this Saturn-sized screen. Side note, the unbelievable images captured by the James Webb Telescope would be perfect for Sphere. This could be a match made in science heaven. Side side note, gaming in here would be mental. Mile High Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition? Come on! On the tech topic, the knowledge is dope. Featuring a 16x16 16 16 Squillion K wraparound screen, the picture is louder, the sound is brighter. Imagine going from VHS to 4K Blu-ray in one go. It has all the colors, loads of them. Pink, and silver, all the colors. Massive subwoofer air cannons blast you on a molecular level and shake the very atmosphere. The mega base vibrates your seat like a jackrabbit trapped under the sofa. The story continues with the origin of us. Farmers in Africa sing as they pick crops. Ladies in India clip tea leaves with wooden tools. Powerful imagery that creates emotion and empathy. Next, we get various stunning ancient temples and spaces of worship. A lot of domes and gold. The film blends them up to show the similarities as if to say it's all kind of the same. The narrators are like, at first, humans were nice, and we lived at one with the land as a community, and no one had phones, and we all just looked after our grandparents and everyone was happy all of the time. And you're like, uh-oh, think I know where this is going. Inevitably, we get to the bad. Industrial revolution, internal combustion, infinite construction, microplastics poison our waterways, Elon Bezos eats your kids. We see bleak Soviet-era apartment blocks in Eastern Europe, depressing flight path ghettos in Taiwan, abandoned, overgrown roller coasters in China or Alabama. Not sure where they are. The film never says because it doesn't care. And nor should you because info is boring. Our impact worsens. Overflowing landfills, scorched earth forests, strip mines carved as deep as mountains are high. Distortion solo! As horrifying as it is, this section kind of goes easy given what it could show. Because the film is being sold as mass entertainment, they don't want to get too heavy. It's Vegas. You gotta compete with the world's finest live performers in the fields of music, magic, and the erotic arts. Can't be bringing folks down with too much hard truth. So the end of the movie keeps it hopeful, but somewhat vague. It's really about how people suck, and if we don't do something soon, we'll have to leave the planet and never come back. Thank goodness we're prepared, and somehow able to set up little terraformer escape pods all over the Earth and the moon. I wonder, do I gotta make a resi or something? Hope they have enough for everybody. Should you go and see it? I don't know. I don't know you, bro. I don't know where you live. I enjoyed it. The space story sucks, but the visuals astound. The warped perspective offered by the hemispherical camera bends light to make you see the world with fresh eyes. If you're already in Sin City, I say, see Darren's brain experience. What would I want to see next at Sphere? Come on!